stuff and things and Paper Pumpkin is the 26th. So Paper Pumpkin arrived a few days late. It is kind of misting out and we actually had to swing by the post office on the way out of town so we're towing the trailer with us and we grabbed Paper Pumpkin so that I don't have to miss it for a week. Uh, we're going to be up north for a week because all the spots were full down here. So I will be getting to Paper Pumpkin likely tomorrow because I have something already planned for today. So we are on our Valentine edition and hopefully it's very cool. I bought some heart dies from the January catalog that I plan to supplement with this kit. So hopefully uh, they will all coordinate nicely. So stay tuned for more Paper Pumpkin Fun. All right, so I am here. It is in the AM and sunny, so there's gonna be some shadow. Uh, the sun is behind me. So we have hugs and kisses, you know, kisses and hugs. And I see an add-on of mini treat boxes that you can purchase. And then talk, talking about next month's kit, a curated playlist. Oh, so they, they now have been making playlists for you to uh, play music while you craft. And we've got Grey Granite for the spot for the month. And we have XO Arrow, some fat hearts, and then a heart with an arrow in it that's smaller. Sending you love, more love you for you and friend. Pink and very vanilla. Flirty flamingo pink, that is. And some white iridescent sequins. Mini dimensionals. nine envelopes with wonderful gold foil XOXOs. The entire insides have the XOs, so that's going to be fun. I do want to send some of these to Hard Pals. So we have heart-shaped, ooh, special fancy folds. And I see that we have a fold problem here. So I have a little, a little correction that will need to be made. See on both sides, the score is flat, but it's curved. So we'll do a little correction to that. But then of course I have three card front pieces per card. So keep that in mind. That is wonderful. And of course we have nine of those. Vellum hearts. Yeah, these are extra plump hearts this year. Die cuts. Looks like we have. five sheets of these three shapes. We have five sheets times four, so 20 of the foil hearts, and five little square labels with hearts. 
And then I have one last thing to share with you. I purchased this year's heart dies because there is a very cute envelope. And I already have it out to coordinate. And it does have the puffy heart here matches and then some narrower hearts. Uh, some tags. Here is the little envelope maker. I'll be doing some of those and then we'll see if we need to add any more materials. But I suspect there is plenty here to work with without having to dig into anything else, but we'll see. So now that I've got everything open, I did want to show here are the cards. So you have the fold out cards and then some little traditional looks like actually there's different designs look at that that's why I like to look at this oh yeah so not only we do we have the pink three up we have these three additional they're all gold foil three pages of them so again the same folding dilemma to fix if we choose to use these as cards and now I'm going to go off and get some parts and pieces going. I will come back, as always, with any uh, interim thoughts, tips, or tricks to the materials prep. And we'll get going on these alternatives. So stay tuned. Hey, I'm back. I've got some pieces. I have popped out all the die cuts. I have added a couple of new supplemental supply items. And then before I go away, I will do some basic stamping. So additional products. I already said I was going to use the heart dies and I have one observation to make. So here is the die cut and here's the little envelope that it makes. And my point to make here is that these three three sides of the envelope are bigger than this. So my idea is that the smaller loop on the envelope die is the top. So you can take that however you want. This is what it looks like put together with the narrow, narrower flap open at the top. Here is the rounder heart die. There are a bunch of different cuts that give you these little hearts. They aren't quite as puffy, but they still will do the trick. So this rounder heart uh, die matches the shapes that you see here. There's one of these. I also cut some vertical and horizontal I wanted to show you that those actually are cutouts and then they do match and go perfectly on the larger banner and then there is this smaller banner that I cut a couple of in the different colors blushing bride which is the lighter pink and flirty flamingo so those are the pieces that I've cut and then I remembered something really important that I keep forgetting. It, it is a die set of die words that has been in the catalog for a while now. And I have the words all spelled out because you cannot read. It is called Word Wishes dies. And these are the words. Notice St. Patrick's Day, which is significant. There's Easter. You get the word day, happy, and merry. We have New Year's, Valentine's, Father's Day, Mother's Day, and Halloween, as well as Christmas. So I have cut the words out in white and in an, I did an alternate color palette just for fun. It's not something that I usually do. And I thought that people might, you know, not everybody's 
likes pink and not everybody likes the these this kind of peachy pink of the blushing bride and flirty flamingo so I've got these cut and I will share my alternative color palette in a little bit we've got two a set of two Dotty hearts is what it is called and they are literally dotted hearts I believe in either a previous month a few couple months back I actually used these so I have gone ahead and dry embossed these because I want to show you that quick technique whenever you see your paper pumpkin uh, die cuts or cardstock like bases that have a white on one side and color on the other. I have my trusty sanding sponge here that I I just leave this on to keep it somewhat protected and to keep my other items protected from getting scratched up. And this is like just so easy to do as a technique that I just have to share it. And then that's all it takes to get the white dots to show. Another technique that you could use whenever you take off the dies from their piece of paper that they've been cut out of. So for instance, here's the set of these. I always pull, pull mine apart all together and you can see that there's the little little points where they stayed connected. So a quick way to get rid of them is to leave them all in their stack. And there's, there's one right there. And just use the edge of your block and you can just sand those away like almost instantly they're gone. So I don't know how well this works for the smaller die cuts but definitely for the larger die cuts you know this one's pretty small I, I see a little bit along the edge and all I have to do to clean it up is to run my block it is a rather rough you know like a 200 grit not a fine grit so you can always use your block clean those up. Here's a nice big one. Let's see how quickly this disappears. There you go. That is gone. So that is a tip for your additional use of your block. Uh, the alternate color palette. Now I do have two reds floating around here to share with you. I have my thoughts. If you're going to stay with the pink, here is the Blushing Bride and the Flirty Flamingo. This is Poppy Parade, which is a little more orangey red. And now I'm going to set down real red. You can see that this has more blue in it, more blue or purple looking. So I'm drawn to use the Poppy Parade. And you can see I've already cut out a heart because I have a another tip. Uh, way to extend the kit to sh share with you in a moment. The giant hearts that are the card bases, if you want to cut them apart, they will have a flat element on either one side or the other, unless it's the middle one. And I think the middle one, you could just uh, do a little selective trimming and just use it as is. I'm going to go ahead and toss this on just the nearest. See, it's, it is full width. It's actually fuller width. So uh, you could use it like this and trim it down on the sides a little bit more. This red is a full A2 size. And you could, if you wanted to get really fancy, make it offset and round this a little bit with a little work, maybe with the sanding block or carefully with scissors. And then what I recommend that you do with the one side or the other 
grabbing this real red again, is to just trim the whole angle off and tilt your heart for whatever you want to use it for. And I think that that is a great way to use all of these pieces. And then you get triple, instead of nine, you get nine times three, you'll get 27 full-sized hearts by using this technique of breaking them apart. And I do have, this was already in my box, uh, so you can use non, as always, this has been trimmed down, I see. You can use non heart-shaped embossing folders, pretty much any of them. Then I have, for one of my little envelopes, there's always the a fine point jelly roll. This is an 05. Again, I bought these in a set off of Amazon of a you know a 05 to a 10. I think it had four or five pens in it. And then I just wrote in cursive, I heart you, and this is that puffier heart. And you could just have this as in a little element on your your focal layer. There I there is provided white hearts and the this is very vanilla foil hearts so I think if you added I was going to show this on white that you could definitely mix the colors here so I would probably cut this that way and you know it's not it's just very soft but this whole set has a soft look to it so there's a lot of different combinations that you can go with using white and very vanilla and the other colors. All right, so now the envelope, I have taken an envelope and I cut it into the biggest pieces you can get. So on a trimmer, you barely trim off this each side's edge and then you open it up flat and when you open it up flat, you can cut the whole back and gets this oversized piece, which is way over the size of an A2. This is the top flap piece after you cut off the very top glue section. And then this is the inside of the flap with the little arc and then the two side strips are these side strips and I trimmed them off. So you end up with a grand total of three very lovely pieces. They are deaf, they're all gold foil. And even if you want, you can flip it over and use the flirty flamingo side and get larger pieces of flirty flamingo. You can run through the dotty hearts and do some soft sanding and end up with very vanilla showing through because this is very vanilla and it's possible that there's a white core in there that we can't see. So you can choose which sides that you want to utilize from these envelopes. I showed you the Real Red and Poppy Parade and I wanted to share with you, I picked Fresh Freesia and Blackberry Bliss as an alternative color palette to go very nicely with the um, very vanilla. So if you're not a pink person, don't be afraid to explore other colors. So that is the base idea for a non-pink card for you to consider. All right, and I am now going to grab some basic white with which I can stamp. I have some stamps on blocks. For now, I do have my other colors available to me so you can definitely stamp with any colors of ink that you have, but I'm gonna start with a beginner that possibly has some white cardstock. 
And again, this is gray granite. So this is what you were provided. And I have a few This was a very simple, this little heart with the arrow to me would be great to use on the outside of an envelope. So that would be just a ultra simple, if, that, if you're doing lots of these, you could choose to color or just not color. Let's see, we've got these big X's and O's, and as you already know, you can do all sorts of things with these. And I want to stamp off the edge. paper so I can stamp so here's another simple idea purposely stamping off the edge to give it a more natural look Oh, <laughs> that would be a mistake. I was supposed to have my O on the other side, so that is my bad. That just shows that we all can make mistakes. Now, my question is, can I salvage this? I probably wouldn't, but it's always fun to try. With the photopolymer stamps, you can see through what you're stamping have a good chance of relining it up. So look at that. I just salvaged it. It did change my design that I'm gonna do, but that's okay. Nope, I'm making all sorts of messes. I haven't given up on this one yet though, because see what the cause was of that. So you could just have a bunch of fun making OXO patterns. And I like, one thing I do like about these thick stamps is they are not perfect. And if you make sure to just not let those little bits that aren't colored in bother you, no one is gonna know that that is not the way the stamp is supposed to work. Oops. I'm going to clean off what'll happen with these if you have your stamps alternating sides. You sometimes stamp the wrong side, which is what I just did. So I had to clean it off. So my fingers didn't get all over in it. So let's say you have that 
and you can trim it down and put it on a mat and you can have you can do something fun with love you That is cute, adjusted. It's all crooked, it's not perfect, but it's just fun. You can add uh, little, little bits very easily with some glue. You've got, if you have die cuts, and I will be taking, of course, all sorts of photos. There's another simple stamping idea. Now, something that I don't do very often, I'm going to do this as a fun, something different. I always do on, on white, my stamping, but I am going to grab... A piece of smoky slate. And I want to show you what tone on tone would look like. There you go. So that is another nice way to create a background. And then you could, oops, pop these two layers up and add some sort of sentiment. And then you could even put this up in the corner and there would be a lovely possibility for a card. Using beginner stamping and just adding the color on color. I have One last idea. Here it is. And I wanted to put this on the very vanilla. And this is the a favorite technique of creating an all over design. These are going to be large. I will use heart and we'll make it all this one color, leaving lots of space. Rotating for each stamp to make sure you get a consistent rotation. And 
and there is a nice full background and I've got a very simple card adding some more a full background and then this very nice tone on tone with the really heavy exos and the heart so I am now going to go away I'm going to take all of these bits and pieces create some more I am going to actually use these so I will do some photography and then I will come back and do some mixing and matching with you and then at the end will be a showcase which as always will have at least 20 different options for you to spark some creativity and I will be back shortly. All right, I am back. I can tell that I've got to turn off the lights. Just one second. All right. I had to tackle this a little bit differently because these are cards that I'm going to use. So I spent some extra time cutting materials. Here is the first fancier one that has the back of the, or the inside of the envelope, the back side. I took the art fine art ribbon and I ruched it and a trick that I did because I'm going to be mixing and matching is I made a ruched piece and you can see that I put it on a thin strip of leftover um, cardstock and I used tear and tape to get a really good um, good adhesion so that it, as I'm using it on different cards it doesn't come apart and then of course for the recipient it won't come apart all right, so that is the first one, and I'm probably going to go ahead and stop in between each one as I get going because I have so many materials cut here for the cards that I'm going to continue on to make final versions of them right away because I need to get them sent. And I do have, so I will go away for a second. This I just happened to have on my desk, and I wanted to get a picture of it, but I thought I would film it. Sorry, Hub is going in and out of the trailer cooking all right I went ahead and took off the very vanilla on very vanilla added the lined pink that has the embossing with gold foil happy Valentine's Day and the vertical banner in the coordinating blushing bride so that is the second one You could alternatively, here's a couple of different ways this one can go down. I have noticed there's no trim on it. You could add a knot or a bow. I would say it would need to be fairly uh, small. Now that I have put this gold on, and I'm going to add some cream. It could be pink or cream. A little different look and for these sequins which are the sequins provided what I do when I'm doing my mix and matching is I purposefully peel off the adhesive so that I can put these on and off and on and off any as many times as I want I don't know looking at this small banner it's probably too small but I'm wondering if you can yep nope, I guess I just like the single one this is just doesn't really fit it's too dainty all right so I do have couple of different this is the stripe with the XOXO and you could again do happy Valentine's Day so this particular background you could put any of the 
heart-shaped fronts. Notice this side has the slight squared off and this side doesn't, so whatever I end up doing with this one, if I don't end up tilting it, I will trim off the right side to make it match because this one is from the left side. All right, so I'm gonna do a rotate. Oh, and here I'm going too fast. I have two cameras going. One is taking photos uh, and the other one is filming. So let's throw on some sequins. Vertical stripiness. Looks very good. Oops, sorry about that. That was some trim going down. it's funny I have not figured out the perfect balance of when to take the photos versus when I film because it never fails when I'm mixing and matching the second time it always I come up with different ideas so I'm trying to actually put these together with you and take photography with the other camera at the same time. So I'm going to quickly rebuild this and I might speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. There. Not there. Hide the, my little pop up. So there is that one, the busiest one. So, I'm going to go away and set up for a whole new look. All right, I'm back. I've got the smoky slate, clean and simple stamping that I did, and I want to build it up a couple of different ways. I've got a whisper white or no, this is a very vanilla envelope, and I wanted to point out something that I did discover about it, and that is that with the cardstock is heavy enough, it's hard to get this to stay closed even with dots. So I will be recommending that you use tear and tape to hold down the top flap. Um, I do have some skinnier than one quarter inch you could easily take the quarter inch in a half inch you know pretty small and just cut it in half it is required because this is just such a, a, a thick fold for a very small envelope All right, so here is what it looks like plain. I grabbed some smoky slate trim. This trim right here that coordinates. You can make this a soft gold by using like a so saffron blend. I have a piece of it floating around in the gold. Here it is. So here is the slightly golded version with a, just a very subtle change that I have in mind to use on some of the gold foil cards. All right, so we've got smoky slate trim. 
you can pop up. I went ahead and trimmed it down so that it is matted if you were to put it on a base. And then you could leave it this simple or I've got a couple of different ways to dress it up further. Uh, you could easily pop on a flirty flamingo element, this little focal. I went ahead and showed you sanding the dotted hearts, which goes perfectly with the very small label. There's five of these. Here's what it looks like unstamped. And then I went ahead and took scissors and roughed up the edges of the heart and the arrow to give it some more texture. And I've popped up the love you. So that is a really easy way to dress that up. I'm going to take a photo. Then I have there is an envelope. You could cut out a heart in any color you want. I don't think I have a white heart, but I can take this. Um, you can do a smoky slate one and you can write on the heart. This is actually a gold foil heart. So that's what that looks like sticking out. And because you already have the love you friend on the background, that means you could just keep the focal um, without a sentiment. It doesn't need a sentiment. And then I do have some extra hearts here. That way. Yep. And if we have a little bit of gold. Yeah, we'll probably do this one down here. And a gold one. I need to add a little bit more gold in my mind to have it balance. And we can't put this down any further. And because this gold heart is peeking through, I am actually okay with just one gold heart. I still, I love these little, this little banner. So that, I think this is small enough that you could add it. And just keep dressing this up as much as you want it, or as little, until you are happy. I see another cool gold element that would be fun. I could put it here in the middle. And then... And what I haven't really checked out yet, I'm seeing this, this is white. Yeah, see, that is not a good match with the very vanilla. And I am, because it's getting dark, I am going to uh, rearrange things and I will come back and I'm going to go ahead and turn the light on because it is getting dark. All right, I have the light on because it is dark out. So this one, I went ahead and used the vellum heart and one of the smaller blushing bride put the arrow behind because it is smoky slate. And you could either use this or not. That is up to you. I was thinking it already had enough text elements on it and then just added some sequins. And I really like that one. I am definitely going to keep that in mind for making into my final version. I have, um, if you want a little splash of red, I haven't done a lot with this red. And it is not in the cream, so I have a white envelope, a very vanilla envelope and floating around here I do have a blushing bride envelope so 
you could, oh, and this has the gold foil. But I was not going to use the gold foil. So you've got any, a, a little splash of red, totally up to you. Uh, add more red elements if you want. That happens to be real red. No, let's see, which part? I think it's Poppy Parade. Yes, so that actually is a cut from Poppy Parade. Let's bring out this guy. This is the Smoky Slate, and it, I have not trimmed it down. So this is a tone on tone. And I am thinking I had the focal here that would look very cute with it. I do plan on trimming this down. All right, so I now want to work with a little bit of the Flirty Flamingo. This is my last uh, color scheme I was working with, with the white and Flirty Flamingo together. And you can, if you wanted to have the white either be stamped or you could do an, an embossing treatment. And I do have some fun hearts to move around. So that is a cute idea. And then we have the sequins. This is definitely a design that I am going to use for sure. And I want to share with you the infamous color differences. Now this doesn't look too terrible. Let me get rid of this. So this is basic white and here is the still pretty coolish gray. So if you wanted to use this as a layer, you could see if it works with vellum. So I'm going to put the vellum and then you can, and I don't like that. See, this is the two, I don't like this just because it's too much gold foil, foil on foil. So trying to mix it up. Now I'm going to go full on gold because then I can add my happy Valentine's day. If you still feel that these two colors fight too much, which to me, it, it's okay. It doesn't bother me. Uh, you could always sponge flirty flamingo around the edge of that heart if you wanted to. So that looks like a lot of fun. And then you could always swap out the Flirty Flamingo accents for gold ones. And I would leave the hearts, if you're gonna leave the edge matte Flirty Flamingo, I would leave a little more Flirty Flamingo coloring like that. So I believe that um, I am finished for this edition. I'm going to go ahead and still take some more photography.
I will have the full supplies list of everything that I have demonstrated today over on my blog. Please leave your comments, questions, or concerns here on my video or over on my blog. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.